The traditional Pomodoro technique consists of doing an activity for 25 minutes, then taking a break for 5 minutes. This is repeated 4 times, after which a longer break of about 15 to 30 minutes is taken. This time management technique trains us to focus on one task at a time, and has been proven to be quite effective for procrastination. This cyclic division between activity and rest in the Pomodoro Technique has some similarities to polyphasic sleeping, with its respective cyclic division between awake and asleep time. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Athena, and like a lot of you, I love naps. Today, we'll be talking about how polyphasic sleep and naps can work in tandem with the Pomodoro Technique to make the most of your extra waking hours. Ever since I learned about polyphasic sleep and the Pomodoro Technique, I've dreamed about combining these two for superhuman productivity. While polyphasic sleep gives you more time, the Pomodoro Technique helps you optimize that time. But why would how you sleep relate to how you manage your work time? Well, both polyphasic sleep and the Pomodoro Technique space activity and rest throughout the day. For polyphasic sleep, that's awake time and a sleep time. For the Pomodoro Technique, that's activity time and break time. When you first start out with the Pomodoro Technique, it's best to go with the standard version. 25 minutes may feel short, but the longer you try to focus, the more likely it is you'll get distracted. It has been concluded that our attention span is, not surprisingly, decreasing over the years, from 12 seconds in the year 2000 to 8 seconds in 2015. Therefore, it is better to start with a shorter activity period and a shorter break period as well. Longer break periods can invite more procrastination too. As you get better at the Pomodoro Technique, it can be beneficial to lengthen your work and break times. A common alternate variant is 50 minutes of work with a short break of 10 minutes and a long break of 20 minutes. These alternate variants can often be more realistic to maintain than the traditional 25 to 5 version especially in work settings that demand constant productivity and leave very small slots for breaks. Now let's get into what the Pomodoro Technique will look like with a polyphasic schedule. Recall from earlier that waking hours in a polyphasic schedule represent a Pomodoro's activities, while sleeping hours represent a Pomodoro's break. Using this strategy, a short nap of 20 minutes or less on a polyphasic schedule can be used as a fourth break period for a Pomodoro. This is easily achieved by doing the first three Pomodoros normally, then having a short cooldown period before your fourth break to prepare for falling asleep. If the activities you're doing are mentally or physically demanding, your cooldown period should be a bit longer. During the cooldown period, you can do anything as long as it's relaxing. Experienced and adapted polyphasic sleepers need a very short cooldown period, less than five minutes, to prepare for falling asleep. This cooldown period is necessary to help the brain enter a slow wave state so that you can fall asleep faster and have more effective naps. Now let's look at what this looks like with Dual Core 1, abbreviated DC1, which is a schedule with a three and a half hour core at about 10 p.m., a one and a half hour core at about 6 a.m., and then an afternoon nap. We'll be using an example to show what an ideal Pomodoro session with nap included could look like. This Pomodoro session will allow for a standard DC1 nap, which NapChart, an awesome tool for planning your naps and your schedule, puts at 2 p.m. We'll be starting our session at 11.50 a.m. and ending at 4.30 p.m. You can add more Pomodoros onto the beginning or the end if you need to work for longer. At 11.50, we'll start out with a programming project. Projects that take a long time to finish and require a few minutes to get in the zone before you can be effective should be started first so that you can get the most out of your Pomodoros. We'll program for 25 minutes, then spend our five minute break getting some water and petting a cat or your pet of choice. Now for the second period of 25 minutes, we'll continue programming. That first five minute break wasn't long enough to knock us out of the zone. Now we're at our second five minute break. Some Pomodoro users have suggested using these five minute breaks to nap, but this is not recommended when on a polyphasic schedule. Five minutes is far too short to contain any vital sleep stages and can result in an oversleep if you're sleep deprived enough. In addition, these five minute naps are only useful on flexible, non-reducing, random sleep schedules. Let me explain what those are. Flexible schedules are where you can move your sleeps around a bit because you haven't reduced your total amount of sleep that much. Random schedules are where you take things as they come. Maybe you go to sleep at 10pm one day because you're bored and don't have anything to do. 
maybe you take a nap on a lazy Saturday afternoon and then stay up till midnight the next day because you have a paper due. Non-reducing schedules are where you don't reduce your total amount of sleep at all. For example, if you sleep eight hours a night, a non-reducing every mid one schedule would be seven and a half hours at night plus an afternoon nap. Back to Pomodoros. Now it's time for our third work block. Two Pomodoros was enough to finish programming for today, so next we'll be doing some flashcards. After our third work block, we get our third break block. For this break, we'll be getting some more water and petting some more cats. After this, we'll do one more block of memorizing flashcards. Then we get to the fun part, the nap. First, we have to take a break to cool down. This cool down can be whatever you like to do to relax. Maybe you're reading a book, stretching, or writing down what you need to do once you wake up. Focus on breathing deeply and save any worrying about upcoming tasks or events for after you've woken up. After 10 minutes, we finally get to take a nap. A standard nap is 20 minutes, and going much above that can send you into some deeper sleep stages, which can potentially be much harder to wake up from. After our nap, it's best to start our fifth work block with something active and engaging, like exercise or active chores. If you start with something monotonous and boring right after you wake up, it can be difficult to stay awake. Once you're awake, you can use your remaining work blocks to do whatever is most important for you. For the learners and students, one useful activity after waking up can be reciting material learned before the sleep block. This takes advantage of some of the learning benefits that naps give. Those with anxiety may find doing Pomodoros very difficult because of the pressure from the ticking clock. It's important to take this into consideration before you start implementing Pomodoros in your daily routine. Despite the overwhelming evidence that it is impossible to make Pomodoros work in a constrained working environment that necessitates long operations, the Pomodoro technique can be useful at home or even in schools and universities. If you have an hour or two between classes, you can fit in a few Pomodoros then. And if you only have a few minutes between classes, you can treat that as a short break. The Pomodoro technique can also be effective for fighting off sleep deprivation when attempting to adapt to a polyphasic schedule. Depending on your sleep deprivation levels and what polyphasic schedule is being practiced, it can be impossible to achieve your desired productivity levels even with the extra waking hours gained from said sleep schedules. It was shown that sleep deprivation can affect productivity on a very large scale. In a Korean study, it was found that 1 hour and 54 minutes of productive time were lost weekly. In order to not completely butcher productivity during the adaptation stage, it is recommended that you choose a schedule that is reasonable and right for your lifestyle so that you don't spend all of your waking hours putting all of your efforts into just staying awake. The number 1 hour and 54 minutes only accounts for sleep deprived states and does not apply to successful polyphasic adaptations. The Pomodoro Technique is a powerful tool to boost motivation and productivity and build personal discipline by learning how to make a clear path towards your goals and defining the tasks that need to be done to reach them. However, the Pomodoro Technique has its own flaws and may not fit certain personalities or conditions. Although it is difficult to maintain Pomodoros on a daily basis, it remains a valuable tool to fight off procrastination and motivate task completion. As a result, it is especially important to consider a suitable polyphasic lifestyle and a clear set of objectives so that you can maintain productivity for as long as possible. The Pomodoro Technique promises to deliver good results as long as you have the determination and skills to make it work. Make your waking hours count for you, not against you. And remember to nap well, people.